Hello everyone and welcome back to more Pokemon Trivia 101. Today I'm going to show you where, how and why to get number 27 Sandshrew and number 28 Sandslash. Let's get right into it. First, game location and held items. Sandshrew and Sandslash are version exclusives and only obtainable in Pokemon Blue and Yellow. This means if you want one in Pokemon Red, you will have to trade it over. They are the counterparts to Ekans and Arbok. Locations in Pokemon Blue are as follows. For Sandshrew, on Route 4, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 23, and for Sandslash, only on Route 23 and the Cerulean Cave. In Pokemon Yellow, for Sandshrew, Routes 3 and 4, and also in the Mount Moon. And for Sandslash, only in the Cerulean Cave. Sandshrew will evolve to Sandslash at level 22, and if you trade Sandshrew or Sandslash to any of the Generation 2 games, they will hold a regular berry with a 100% chance. If you plan to include Sandshrew and Sandslash in your playthrough, you will have to catch a Sandshrew and evolve it, since Sandslash is only available very late in the game. I would probably recommend to get it on Route 4. With this you will have it quite early and you can use it, for example, against Surge or Erika. If you don't want them for a playthrough and you only have to catch them to complete your Pokédex, the best place for Sandshrew in blue is on Route 11 and in yellow on Route 4. And the best place for Sandslash would be in the Cerulean Cave on the first floor. In Pokemon Blue you could also catch a Sandshrew on Route 23 and level it up once to evolve it to Sandslash. Second, Stats, Typing and Strategy. Sandshrew and Sandslash are good ground Pokemon to use in the first generation. If you want a ground Pokemon that is a bit out of the ordinary. They have good attack and defense but low special and not that much better speed. Sadly, they don't learn any ground attacks via level up, which means if you want to make real use of them, you will have to use TM and HM moves, but luckily they can learn some good moves that way. Since they can learn Dig via TM, you can use them early against Surge in Vermilion City, and they are useful against Koga in Fuchsia City with his Poison Pokemon, and Blaine on Cinnabar Island with his Fire Pokemon. They are not that bad for most other trainers you will fight on routes as well. In Cerulean City, you have to watch out for Misty with her Water Pokemon, and in Celadon City, you will have to watch out for Erika and her Grass Pokemon. But you can still take on them if you don't have any other Pokemon, since two of Erika's Pokemon are part poison. In the Elite Four, they are only great against Agatha. Even though she is a Ghost Trainer, since in the first generation there are only three Ghost type Pokemon, her team solely consists of Pokemon that are at least part poison. With them being ground, they are weak to water, grass and ice times two, and they resist poison and rock times two. And for viable moves, via level up, slash at 17, Swift at 31 or 36 and Fury Swipes at 47. Via TM or HM, TM03 Sword Stance, TM06 Toxic, TM08 Body Slam, TM10 Double Edge, TM15 Hyper Beam, TM26 Earthquake, TM28 Dick, TM48 Rock Slide, TM50 Substitute and HM04 Strength. As far as movesets go for a playthrough, you will mostly use Scratch in the beginning. Then, at level 17, have it learn Slash and after that teach it Dig or Strength and Earthquake. Your final moveset will probably look something like this. Slash, Earthquake, Strength or Body Slam and Dig. Instead of Dig, you can also use Rock Slide for some more coverage. Third, Basic Infos. Sandshrew and Sandslash have the ground type. They have the ability Sand Veil as a main and Sand Rush as a hidden ability. During a sandstorm, the accuracy of any move used against a Pokemon with Sand Veil is modified by a factor of 4 fifths. And Pokemon with Sand Veil will take no damage from the sandstorm if it otherwise would. And the hidden ability Sand Rush doubles the speed stat of the user. A Pokemon with this ability will also take no damage from sandstorm if it otherwise would. Sandshrew is 2 feet or 0.6 meters tall, weighs 26.6 pounds or 12 kilograms, and has the highest possible catch rate of 255 or a 43.9% chance to be caught by a Pokeball at full health. Sand Slash is 3 feet 3 inches or 1.2 meters tall, weighs 65 pounds or 29.5 kilograms and has a catch rate of 90 or a 20.1% chance to be caught. The evolution line has a gender rate of male 50% and female 50%, belongs to the field egg group and has a hatch time of 5140 to 5396 steps. Fourth, origin and name origin. Sandshrew may be based on an armadillo, which are also found in desert regions. It is also mentioned that both Sandshrew and Sandslash have poisonous claws, similar to some species of the shrew. 
This leads us to its name origin, which is most likely a combination of sand and shrew. And sand slash could be a mix between a pangolin, a hedgehog and a porcupine, sharing various traits from them. Sand shrew also is very similar to a pangolin. Sand slash's name is also based on sand and slash, referring to its long, sharp claws. Alright, that's it for this episode. If you enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. And if there is something I can do better or something else you'd like to see, please let me know in the comments. See you in the next one.